Hey folks, welcome back to Chris White Reports. This is Chris Mott. And this is ironic. I'm at Boston Coffee, which was the last place I was in Cape Town before I went to Gauteng in February. And I'm at, I, you heard of this guy before? I, you might have heard of him, uh, Francois Van Cook. Francois, Chris. Clear mind. Very nice to meet you, man. So you've been here before? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was ironic. The last time I was in Cape Town, uh, a couple of my viewers said, hey, um, I was over eating at a restaurant on Tigerberg. Okay. And uh, my viewer said, I really like you to meet my fiance. And I, okay, but she couldn't come. And we had a little bit of time. I had to get to the airport to fly to, to uh, Joburg. And uh, what happened was uh, we, we drove over to meet her, but then the time was short, and I said, we're going to get lunch. I said, can we just get a coffee or something? And they said, sure. So I followed them. I'm like, where are we going? Nah, are we pulling here? <laughs> and this is where we came. I had a milkshake, and I was sitting at that table, and at this table right here, I was talking. This happens, I, this happens to you all the time. You know, I'm a famous musician, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, sort of a journalist, in it. It's, but in South Africa, apparently, I'm pretty well known. Nice. So this is a good example. I was sitting here. And we were talking, and I was telling people about how I got recognized in Mwibaga, you know, and it's a crazy story. And then the Tigerberg Valley, how I recognized. And then the table right there, the guy leans in and says, you're that American colonel. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. Yeah, so, so it's nice ironic. So, we're, so when I saw it was Boston Coffee, I'm like, I can find that place. Nice one. I, yeah. I don't know if you, uh, there's, there's a bunch of streets here, American president's names. I, I saw that, yeah. Saw, yeah. I saw that. But we don't see any Trump streets yet. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> probably not. Probably not in the near future. But anyway. Uh, uh, Build another street for him. <laughs> well, there we go. Well, we could use some new streets around here. But, but Belleville, so Francois Van Koch, not your original surname. You, you had to change that at some point. We may begin in that if you want. But uh, yeah, yeah, you want to talk about I, that? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, my, my real name is Badenhorst. That sounds very German. It is German. Yeah, it's from a town called Badenhorst in Germany. That's yeah. all I really know. <laughs> um, and yeah, when, when I started kind of playing music and, and it became like a public thing, it was uh, with Focus Politica. That's like Ooh. 20, 20 years ago that, now. That's, that's what it sounds like, isn't it? In in yeah, Focus <laughs> Politica, fuck off Politica. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> for, the, for the global audience, the English speakers, that's what it means. Yeah. <laughs> so um, when we started... Oh, like, a rebel? I mean, where did that come in? That, that's like, yeah. that doesn't sound like you're earth, wind, and fire, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think when, obviously we grew up in um, a very conservative kind of South Africa. Your, your father's a minister? Or? Yes, okay. yeah. So, so oh, I that was probably a shocker. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, so, so for us, it was like kind of a bit of a rebellion to kind of everything that we grew up with, you know? So um, when that thing came out, uh, there was an article in the newspaper. Uh, Afrikaans is yeah. called the Burger. Yeah, um, and the um, and my name my name was uh, listed as Francia Badenhorst, and um, at that time, I kind of I already I was already out of the house, mm -hmm. but my dad was still obviously he, he was actually a minister up up until a couple of months ago. He got he Just recently, retired finally. Recently retired, yeah. So so they got a bunch of phone calls about their son being in this controversial. controversial what, what time band. frame are we talking about? What year was this? Two thousand three. Oh, okay. okay. This must be early, early 2004. Okay. Yeah. So, so we had this running joke about a, a guy called Fun Coke, like a Yuan Fun Coke or yeah. whatever. As in Coca Cola. Coca Cola, because there was like a there was a, a Coca Cola um, manufacturing place in Friendal okay. up the coast here. So this is an old joke that we had Yuan Fun Coke. So funny. Ha ha ha. So. After the people found found um, our house complaining about me being in this band, my mom asked me, "Can you please just not use your name in the media anymore?" <laughs> and in an interview, I just said, "My name is Franja Van Koch now," and that was uh, April 2004. So I've been Van Koch since <laughs> since then. Well, well, it's a similar sort of thing happened to me because I was calling into uh, Ronaldo Chos program. He's in Port Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. yeah well, well, I called him Ronaldo's program one day. He was taking two minute phone calls from viewers. I was exercising. It was right after I retired. And uh, I had listened to him in the past, but I'm, I'm exercising, jogging, running in Pennsylvania through orchards, and I'm um, listening. And these people calling in, I'm like, oh, these people, okay, I need to call in. So, so I got myself in the queue, and uh, he was taking two-minute calls, and then you have to, you know, two minutes and you're done. I called in at 20 after the hour, and we talked till the top of the hour, 40 minutes. And people were like, who is this Oakman? How does he know so much about South Africa? How do we find him? And so Ronaldo said, well, where do they find you? And I had a channel, but, but it was on my, my initials that I used, uh, WMW Chris, for my, my William Martin Wyatt, which is actually my name, and Chris, because I go about Christmas Day I was born on. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of been my handle all over social media for 20-plus years. 
And uh, so that was why YouTube channel was called, but I didn't have a name for it. So I said, um, Chris Wyatt Africa. And that, that just kind of stuck. And that's <laughs> cool. how people found me. So yeah. not quite as, uh, as, as interesting as <laughs> Francois Van Cook, but, <laughs> but you yeah. know, when, when I, when I had made your acquaintance and I was, you know, I first saw your name, I, I wasn't sure how to pronounce it because I wasn't sure if it was like some sort of bizarre Afrikaans, you know, transformation of a like French name or something. So I was like, Francois Van Cook. That's yeah, what I so said. Some people, some people think it's my real name. I don't know how, how people can. <laughs> but it works. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've, I, I'm definitely more of Van Kook now than a bar in Aust, yeah. you know what I mean, <laughs> 20 years later. So are you still kind of a rebel? Yeah, I guess I, I still kind of, into, I guess I kind of, not middle age, but, but, but approaching it. I guess I, I still kind of like sticking it to the man, yeah. you know, I mean, I think that was the original thought, and, um, you know, I, I think just just making a career out of music is kind of sticking it to the man, you know. So I, I guess I'm still kind of a rebel. I've, I've calmed down uh, <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, in, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, things changed quite a, quite a bit in 20 years. I think when, when we started that project, you know, we were, like, on a mission to, um, to kind of uh, liberate ourselves in all forms. And, I mean, that means, like the party lifestyle as well so I kind of cut down quite drastically on that like through the years and well that's probably healthy yeah so that, uh, that, 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 that's changed but I mean I think the things I think about I think my mind you know I still think kind of the same but everything else has kind of changed in 20 years for sure so you, you really started playing when you were a teenager, right? That's when yeah. you got into it. I mean, did, were you into instruments or the singing or what, what started? I mean, some kids learned piano growing up. I didn't. I, I tried to learn drums. I can't read sheet music. That was the end of that for me. It was tough. I wish I wish I learned drums. I love the drums. Oh, yeah, it's um, awesome, yeah. Percussion, but, I'm, but, I'm, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty useless. At it. <laughs> Same here. We got something in common. <laughs> no, I, I started. I, my folks are quite musical. I mean, okay. I grew up with like, uh, you know, all the Disney musicals mm. in my house, and and you know, um, in church, I remember I've got like memory from church where my. Um, my family is singing and all of them are harmonizing with the rest of the church and I was so embarrassed you know I was like oh my family like it's, it's too much you know <laughs> so I grew up in a, in a, in a um, very musical family but I was into rugby I was into sports when I was ah, a, when that's I was a, a topic kid. we'll be talking about <laughs> yeah so so all I cared about was playing rugby did, did you played rugby then yeah yeah where'd you sure. play scrum off oh I was going to say that yeah. I didn't want to assume he's, he's yeah. got the bill for no, scrum I was, quite, I was quite serious I, I, I think I peaked a little bit earlier though I peaked <laughs> under 30 I played uh, province uh, they've got a week here called Craven Week yeah uh, Craven Week yeah, yeah. after Danny Craven yeah. yeah so I played that when I was 13 uh, I played after school I played a little bit of club rugby but the music kind of eventually took, took over. over but I mean when I was uh, your early high school I kind of got into you know Nirvana and Paul Jam ah, and okay, okay. Green Day and yeah, yeah. Offspring and those, those bands kind of made me want to pick up a guitar and uh, I think that kind of changed things you know well that's, that's interesting you know you mentioned um, I guess and, and maybe you can clarify if, if I'm wrong about this, but the the, the kind of sort of rebellion against uh, I'm guessing kind of a conservative lifestyle. That's where it came from. I mean, the Dutch Reformed Church. I, I don't know if that's where your father was in, yeah. but that that's a big part of South African society for a long time. And uh, I, I've said this before. I wrote an article a few years back about Afrikaans music, pop music, and, and and rap and metal and all that, and how it's kind of liberated the Afrikaans speaking community in some ways from a lot of the re the heavy. Uh, religious conservative restrictions that were on because if you go back during the, the National Party years I mean people had to go to Sun City to listen to music mm, and things like for that sure, so, for sure. so I mean I, I think there's in my view there's been a flowering of Afrikaans culturally because of music in the past 20 years would you agree? Yeah yeah I, th I, th I think like you know, people have also changed a lot over yeah, 10 years yeah. you know a, a thing like Folk of Politica was seriously frowned upon now nobody's even here 20 years ago <laughs> now it's like contemporary you know what I mean it's like it's so weird it was, not a <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so weird how people change you know I, I meet people now uh, you know people that are maybe my age or a little bit older no they must be older and they would have frowned talking but, to you 20 but, years but ago they, they like I meet, I meet people at shows that tell me they burned their kids CDs you know oh my gosh and now they're <laughs> like, buying CDs and now, the now they come to the shows <laughs> it's like it's just crazy how, how yeah. things change over time yeah, no it is insane. really crazy now, so when I was a kid I, I sang in the choir and uh, I was pretty good but then puberty hit and I didn't quite get the and that was the end of my singing days so when I was here last time uh, I went to uh, Steve Hofbauer was supposed to perform at the Tall Monument oh yeah and they backed out of it so he went to Velbedock Scott Borger's Velbedock yes yeah so I went there and um, 
Steve was on stage and he started singing Afrikaans. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's a friend here of, of South Africa, especially of Afrikaners and Boers. It's, uh, he's an American colonel. Oh, he's talking about me. So I put the camera on him and started recording because I was going to sing. And he said, and he said all that in Afrikaans, and he said, uh, I need you up on stage. So I, I come up on stage, and he says, ladies and gentlemen, Chris White, Colonel Chris White. <laughs> and he leans over, grabs my shoulder, and he says, do you know the words? It's a Ballad of the Green Beret. I'm like, yeah, but I can't sing. He's like, sing with me. So he had made me sing the Ballad, ballad nice of the Green Beret. Yeah, nice it was pretty cool. But, but, but I can confirm without any reservation that I did check with the exterminators, and within the three square kilometer radius of Velbanok, there are no vermin. They all fled. <laughs> All the rats and mice fled when they heard me sing. <laughs> so, so, still, still the same with me to this day. <laughs> no, I don't think I so. cleared out Pretoria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you definitely, you, I don't know, I cleared out, but you definitely rocked the house. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Uh, I, uh, I bought a ticket, not knowing what to expect, because I, I listened to some no, of the thank music. Thank you for buying a ticket, man. No, it's I, my I, pleasure. If I, if I knew, uh, you, we would obviously invite you. No, sure. no, in fact, Louise offered me a ticket. You know, she's like, I'll give you a ticket. I already bought one. Uh, okay. So, no, I, I, I do that um, when I go to events. I mean, you give me a t-shirt if you want. That's a different story. But <laughs> I should have done that. I should have actually bought one. Yeah, no, I actually... Uh, I'll get one sent to you. Okay, I, I bought one, uh, but it was just a friend's one from Coke. It wasn't the tour one. Because okay. by the time I got out of the building and got out to the stand, Alan, um, Alan Meyer was out there. Oh, you, you met that Alan. Alan okay. knows me. He's one of my viewers. I'm no way. No way. <laughs> so I walk, I walk out to the merch stand because I, I was I parked under you. I'll have to take a selfie with you afterwards and I'll see Yeah, we'll do that, yeah. So I, so I come up and I'm like, hey, aren't they selling merchandise? It's a concert. I mean, you know, that's one way that bands make a lot of money. And the guy said, no, you go outside. So I walked outside and I found the stand. I walked up and he had like the black shirt and the purple shirt. And I'm like, let me try the purple shirt. He said, do you have this in a 2X large because it's cotton, it'll shrink. And um, Alan was there. I don't know Alan from anybody, you know, and he's like me. He looks like a mountain man. And Alan says, uh, Colonel Wyatt, how you doing? What you doing here at the concert? And I'm like, uh, I'm fine. Uh, who are you? Oh, yeah, I'm Alan Meyer, man. I'm like the backup guitarist for the band. I'm like, what? <laughs> They, cool. They're just taking slight liberties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he didn't say that. I, 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 I told him no, he's, he's, actually, he's actually quite a good guitarist. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I said that. That was. But I, I, I've taken him on stage, and he got so flustered if he's in front of you. You've been caught out, Alan. <laughs> Al. <laughs> Remember, uh, he's, he's also been playing in bands since he was a, yeah, he was yeah. a kid, you know. No, great guy though. But he's it's amazing funny, guy. The two yeah. of us standing there with the, you know these beards, you know, we like we, we just came out of out of a, out of a concentration camp in nineteen oh two or something like that. But uh, yeah, no. So uh, so the concert, um, I, I didn't know what to expect. I bought the ticket. Um, I, I listened to some of your music, and then you and I talked off camera. And I said, you know, what I listened to about sixty percent is stuff I'm really into, and not all of it was my cup of tea because you got a wide range of stuff. But I went to this concert. Oh my! Oh man! Fucking A! Oh, fucking A! Man, I'm so no, to let's do an Afrikaans. Fucking A! Fuck ya! Yeah. Oh man, it was unbelievable. Um, the, I was so stoked. The energy was incredible. The, it was something else. The only thing is, I should have known better when they said it, it starts at 8. The gates open at 8. I didn't get that. So I'm oh, like, yeah. when's it start, man? It starts at 8. The DJ's but, on for like an hour. Yeah. But you guys were right on time at 9 o'clock, so that's awesome. Bands cool. are always late, so that was much appreciated. <laughs> anyway, so so you guys come out and you just start getting into it. And, of course, um, with the Alphacons and the rap, I could keep up with about 60% of the rap. Yeah, 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 that yeah, kind of that's, gets that's, hard. That's yeah. hectic, you yeah. know. But... Um, but I didn't know that I was going to see Jack Perrow and then and, and Early B. I'm a huge Early B fan, so that was awesome. No, me um, too, me yeah, too. So, so what's the relationship? Let me ask about Early B. What's the relationship? Where'd that come about? Yeah, like the, the, the show is kind of like a, a collaboration show, yeah. mostly. So everyone on that bill... Francois Van Cult and friends. Yes, yeah, everyone on that bill I've actually written and released music with. Okay. So that's kind of the prerequisite for, being, the for being on the show. Yeah, I want to make it like, you know, because other people also do friend shows, but I mean, I want to keep this something that we worked on together you know what I mean mm-hmm. sorry about That's that right. so um, yeah, I'll start actually with Jack Parrow because yeah, we, okay. we kind of grew up in the same circles he's from so Durban been around from a long Bell. time yeah. you know I saw him play to like 10 people on a metal night in observatory you know what I mean like um, that sounds like Monty Jackson coming up he was in bars for years before he finally got noticed for sure for yeah. sure and uh, and Jack Perry just hit it very big like right after that and kind of early B came on the scene a couple of years later and um, I kind of you know, heard about him. People would play me some of his tunes, you know, before anything was out. And um, obviously, he kind of just exploded. It blew I think, up, yeah. I think he's like a, a very special voice for Afrikaans people. I agree. And and his cadence with his rap is unbelievable. Like no, 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 he is so musical. It's, yes. it's insane. Like, I've, I've spent time with him in studio, and like, he's just insane. Mm-hmm. So, so he actually sent me some of his rhymes, and um, I 
told them I really love it, but I just want to put my kind of musical spin on it. Got my band to to write something new for it, and yeah, that's a song we released in, before my first Franz Franz just finished show. That was 2018. So we've been kind of friends since then, and um, I, that that once that one song that we've written together, we get to play once once a year at that show. At that show, yeah. yeah. So it, it, you don't do that show all over the country, it's just done up there? We're doing it in Cape Town now for the okay. second time only, okay. but we've done it in Pretoria since 2018. It's yeah. okay, the taxi strikes over, you'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we'll be fine. I mean, Cape Town people must just come out, that's the problem. Exactly. It's much harder to get them to come out of their houses. It is, it out. is. It's weird, isn't it? It's yeah. such a beautiful place, but you can't get them out of their house. I guess they're all looking out at the mountain. But especially now when it's raining so much. Oh, yeah. They don't, they don't want to buy tickets for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to get wet. <laughs> well, fair enough. I mean, that's 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 fair enough. Yeah, no, but that's pretty. So the show was was. I mean, look. I mean, I'm, look. I'm not trying to be a fanboy, but oh my, it was. I, I didn't want to leave, but I had to leave because I had to drive through a dodgy part to get back to where I was going. Okay. So, so I left uh, before the show ended. Now, you have a song. The first time I ever saw you, ever heard of you, I, I thought you had a completely different sound because it was with Karen Zoig. Okay. Yeah, okay. And, and there's one line in there. My Afri- Afrikaans is terrible. No, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. yeah that's but not bad. it's the G's that do me and as for an auto goes. You know, an auto goes. But, no, so your song, that song, it always hits me, that line, keen potency, you know, and... That, that, that song is unbelievable. Um, what, I mean, that's, that, so I thought like, okay, this guy sings like folk music. <laughs> then I heard the rest of your music. I'm like, yeah. no, he sings a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah that song is quite, is, is a bit of a departure for sure. That yeah. was kind of the first That's your I, first single album, right? First single as a solo okay. artist, yeah. yeah. So before that, I did Folk of Police Car and Funk I could tell, I still do Folk yeah. of Police Car. Um, but that time, um, I, things kind of, fizzled out I guess like a Folk of Police Club was on a bit of a break and Funko yeah. Cartel was on a bit of a break I also look at the camera sometimes yeah yeah we gotta do that <laughs> <laughs> and um, so you get so engaged in conversation yeah. yeah and I kind of I started writing songs I wasn't really sure what it was for um, and at that time I also kind of connected with Corin Zoid a little bit because she covered one of my older songs and um, she told me like she loves that song because I'm vulnerable and that I don't really bring out a lot in my music because I guess I was as a younger man I was I, I was really scared of being vulnerable you know what I mean I kind of well that like, sound that song makes it sound I mean it's the, 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 the videography is brilliant on it too yeah those lamps and everything and the two of you sitting there but the, with that song like I got together with Brian Tola I kind of want to write this song to for my wife it's kind of about our relationship yeah. and kind of about the personal changes I went through that I kind of mentioned yeah. earlier yeah. and um, yeah that song has just kind of exploded it I mean it's, it, it's like it's like it, it's a song that really changed my life I mean the day it came out it was like boom something yeah. it kind of went viral well it's, it's how like I felt viral, about yeah. you so um, yeah it, it, it's crazy that you know you write a song for someone specifically and then like so many people kind of connect well it's it, like you know? with Toto with Rosanna yeah that yeah. was written for his ex-girlfriend <laughs> exactly it's just crazy because that that song belongs to everyone now now yeah it's yeah, not yeah, just yeah, my yeah. wife's song <laughs> it's not, not hers anymore no, <laughs> no it's, it was that it's, look it's uh, it, I still listen to it oh sorry oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. And, and for Car- Karin Zoy it's also kind of a rocker yeah so it was the two of us kind of getting together to do, do, the, do the ballad I think it just kind of you know with the lyrical content and the sound it kind of just struck a nerve it was just like the planets aligned from, with that one you know it's like now, one of those special songs did you perform that at the show in Pretoria? We did it yeah it was the second last song so we maybe just missed it I knew I missed it <laughs> people asked me if I stayed for that I'm like no I had to head out ah we're going to do the big ones towards uh, the end you know, I know, I know and, and I knew it was coming I mean, I, and, uh, but the problem is I would have been recording it on my phone and I would have been singing my horrible <laughs> offer cons and then I it would have been useless because you would have heard me you know back Following over the, maybe not. It was pretty loud in there. <laughs> it was pretty loud, but it was a pretty good venue for that. I think. Yeah. yeah. yeah so we we did it the, that concert only in the in that venue. Um, yeah, since 2018. Obviously, in the COVID times, we did one streaming show. Yeah. And missed one year, but yeah, the rest has been at that venue. Yeah. So. Why such a wide repertoire? I mean, it's like you've got sort of like metal, you've got rap, you've got you've got you've got ballads. Obviously, is it just what came along as you were developing as a musician? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, I kind of grew up with, I guess, grunge and, and punk and alternative stuff, and and that covers like a wide range of styles. Um, and I think the way I like listening to music is, um, or, or like making albums is like kind of what I what I listen to so I guess it comes out 
Yeah, so what you it, like is what you go after. Exactly. Well, that's pretty cool. So, so there's a, I mean, it's, it's definitely, definitely not genre specific what I do. It's kind of, I guess, I, everything's under the rock vibe but this I mean what you're, you're, but this is what you're in the mood for yeah but it's yeah, definitely not genre specific yeah. so are, are you working on a new album or something now or yeah, so at, the, at the moment I, I, I'm, I released like five collabs for the show mm-hmm. uh, or four for the show oh, and another five one. singles five okay, singles okay. Yeah. yeah that's all, all collabs with different people that were on the show for the some of them for the first time this year mm-hmm. um, and there's one more coming out next week with a with a guy called Hanu he's in a band The Narrow mm-hmm. but they, yeah, they, they were a big rock band yeah, like a couple of years ago he's moved to New Zealand but he's a, a great singer mm-hmm. and then I'm also working on a Folk of Police Car album that we're releasing in October because uh, we're 20 years old it's like a that's got to be like an anniversary, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. So we're doing like a big birthday party thing also in Pretoria um, and uh, releasing the album that time. They're well, actually recording up the road uh, some drums at the moment. I see. not very far from here. Well, you're actually from up north originally and then your parents moved here when you were a kid, right? Yeah, I was born in Brakpan. There you go. <laughs> the East Rand. <laughs> yeah. I... I always say I'm, I'm lucky that I escaped <laughs> <laughs> sooner than most did. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, life could have turned out differently. But I know some very cool people from back by now too. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, the music's fantastic, and I'm enjoying talking about. It, but let's talk about something that really matters now. Rugby, rugby. Yeah, I can talk rugby. Go. I can talk rugby. Massive sure. rugby fan, uh, massive rugby supporter, um, and uh, I believe we both support the correct team. It's province in the moment, right? Yeah, damn straight. <laughs> it, it, it was hard in the '90s. You know, oh, yeah, there was a drive. Here. Yeah. there there was a dry period <laughs> but yeah I'm, like I got into rugby in the 80s and uh, yeah, there was a fantastic that's when I got into rugby fantastic, fantastic stretch for the for the for Western province in the 80s and yeah I've been a massive fan ever since it, when, I, when I grew up if we lost on a Saturday I would be sick on the Monday <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd make a point of staying at home on a Monday <laughs> depressed after a loss yeah <laughs> So, you know, a lot of people have been complaining about Curry Cup, and they say this competition should go away. I disagree. They're saying, well, it's just a place to develop players. Well, even if it is that, I think there's value in that. But Curry Cup is the oldest domestic rugby competition in the world. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's it's important because I think, like, um, and you don't have to comment on this because it's kind of kind of political. But if you can, if you want. But, but I mean, you know, the Cheetahs and the and the Southern Kings and the Griquas and the Pumas get dissed by South African Rugby Union. My comments, not Francois's, but anyway, he can comment if he wants. And, and so it's if, if that competition goes away, where are they at? They're for not. sure, for sure. And so I mean, you know, it was the cheetahs and the um, the kings who proved the proof of concept with the URC. The, right before it was URC, when yeah, it's still yeah. the Guinness Pro 14, they made the long journey to Europe. They competed. The kings did terribly, but the cheetahs were competitive in their last year there. And then Saru says, "Ah, thanks. You proved the concept. Here come the bulls. Here come yeah, the stormers. Sh- here yeah, come shit, the cheetahs." Yeah. Definitely got a roll, roll deal of anyone in this of any franchise in this country they sure do yeah. and they're still performing very well in Canada oh, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah no it's uh, well let's let's shift a little bit and talk about the Springboks in the World Cup okay so I have never complained about Springbok selection until this year for the World Cup and my beef was and I'm wrong uh, my humble pie my beef was based on what they told us and the length of time and knowing the severity of an interior cruciate ligament injury that five or so months for Sia Kalisa to come back was not realistic and so I think maybe maybe we got a little misled about how serious the injury was but it's amazing he's back and yeah, I said and he had a great oh, no, I, say, I yeah. said Sia shouldn't be on the squad and I said it out loud of course I always get called a racist when I say that you know. <laughs> but then when I compliment Sia and playing a great game like I did this weekend nobody mentions that but, but I, I'll eat my humble pie he was incredible for 40 minutes I was astounded that he had the, the, the strength that, that he had um, Sia needs to be there I'm glad to see he's there but there's a couple other players I thought shouldn't be there and there's a couple players that uh, aren't there one in particular that uh, I hope to see him in a Springbok jersey sometime that's Leyland Zas from the Stormers that guy is incredible yeah he actually had a good Bunch of great games the, the season, eh? He was, he and was he's good. even better last year. But he was injured this year for uh, a bit. Yeah, yeah, last year he led the he led the URC in tries. Yeah, he did. Yeah, no, he, he's a great player. Um, I just the wings, it's just that's so it's a tough, tough competition. Man. Yeah, yeah there's, I mean, so, look, there's so I mean, many of them. So, well, they're here, putting them in that center now. Well, yeah, exactly <laughs> because they got so much, you got a wealth of you know so much talent. But yeah, it's so, it's so la- tough. Eh? Last year with the Bulls, I watched Kane and Moody, and I said he needs to be at the World Cup. And people are like, ah, you know what you're talking about? That kid can't play. I'm like, yes, he can. You just give him time. This last game, oh, oh my god. Eh? He was unbelievable. He saved two tries by making tackles from yeah. behind, by closing the space, outrunning other players to get there. And he's just, he's dynamite. Look, 
I'm kind of partial to Kurt Lee, Arnsay, and Ches and Colby, but uh, Kenny Moody looks good. No, no, he's fire. Like I think he's really, he's really cool. Uh, also, I thought Jesse Creel had a fantastic game. Oh yeah, I always root for Jesse, and it's great to see him when he has a good game. Yeah, you know, you know he, seems, he, he just gets so much hate. In South he does. Africa. I don't it's know terrible. why. Yeah. You know, it's like you know another guy disappeared, but I guess he's still playing abroad. And I think is really talented is Jan Serfontein. Mm, also, he was, he, he, he was amazing. Yeah. Why isn't he here? You know, yeah. I mean, he's a great talent. Is he, is he in Japan now? Where is is he that where Japan? Yeah. He was in yeah. France, I think, for a while, but but he's just kind of disappeared from South yeah. Africa. You know. And I mean, that happens when guys go abroad. I mean, you don't hear about Faf until he comes back from Japan for, sure. for the World Cup, right? Uh, but I guess he's playing in France now. Faf is in France now. But, you know, you don't, you don't know. They're moving around all the yeah, time yeah. outside the country. But, uh, no, it's, uh, I, I, I think we're in good shape. But, listen, okay, this is going to be a little controversial with some people. It's not going to be controversial with Bulls and Sharks fans. But I'm concerned. When he's on, Monty Lubbock is amazing. When he's off... I'm concerned about fly half for the World Cup. Yeah, uh, I'm a fan, eh? I'm a Monty fan. I I, think I, I'm we, a fan, we, but... We must just give him some time, eh? Okay, okay. <laughs> right, well. The kicking is something to be concerned about, but I think he's... But his ball handling, his distribution, yeah. his kick, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm actually just a little bit concerned about um, our um, gamble this weekend in the, in the centres. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that, we've never tried that, and we're trying it against the mighty All Blacks, which is quite Yeah, but quite I mean, Rossi and Jock aren't playing to win. <laughs> you know? <laughs> They're playing to get the right. I mean, honestly, so when, when Rossi. No, but we want to see a win. Of course right? we want to yeah. see a win against the All Blacks. Yeah. We want to give up a game there, ever. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I was at a Tri Nations game in Ellis Park, the one where Habana pulled his hamstring. He scored two tries, like, real quick. We were rolling out in front of the All Blacks. And then the All Blacks came back. You know, the thing with the All Blacks is that you've got to put your foot on yeah, their yeah. throat. You've got to hear the hooter. you got to wait for the official yeah, to blow the whistle. They can, and come then, back, they can come back from anything. Eh? Yes. I've, I've seen them come back from three tries with like five minutes left. They, they never give up. That's, That's the thing about the All Blacks. That's why I hate them. <laughs> just, no, no, they're a hectic bunch. Eh? They are. But um, any thoughts on the World Cup? Uh, do, you, do you think we have a good chance to win it? Uh, I'm, I'm actually going for the Island game. I'll see you there. I'm there as well. I'm, Nice, right, nice, nice. We will see each other um, dialing him. I've got all four pool stage for, for the box. Oh, really? i got a spring box. Amazing. No, I'm, I'm, me and my wife are just going for the one game. We're basically flying in on the Thursday and coming back on okay. the Sunday. It's going to be cool. Well, we'll, we'll have to link up in Paris. That's definitely, yeah, definitely. cool. Um, so if we be, I think if we take that game, we're going to win the World Cup. I would agree. I would agree. Um, now, here's the thing about Ireland. They're ranked number one in the world, and I like Ireland. It's a team me I too. root for. Also, but, also like Ireland for sure. But... What I've said is that how they got to number one wasn't because they were the best team. And this is not a success, but I watched all those games. I covered them. It's because they caught the good teams on a day that they were playing poorly. Now, some of that's because they played well against them. But, but I mean, they beat the Bucs. They beat the France. They beat, they beat New Zealand. All games that th- those teams should have won, they mm-hmm. lost. I think they lost them more than Ireland beat them. That's no, not diminishing Ireland. I'm just saying that... I'm not convinced they're a genuine number one right now. Uh, I think France is tough, but you yeah, know, was, was but they struggled. But they, 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 oh, they, they didn't lose; it was very close. Yeah, huh? they struggled. It was like I th- thought they lost because it said like a final. And it turned out it was <laughs> fake news. The game was still on. Because someone told me uh, France lost against Scotland. I was like, I'm sure it was the other way around. Yeah, but it was really close. Very so. close. 27, yeah. 29, something, something like that. that. Yeah, it was yeah. really close. But but France is tough. But they lost an Entomek, Roman Entomek. Yes, yeah, shit, yeah. That's I mean, look, I mean, I want to beat them, but I don't want to see teams come with less than their best team, you know. That's uh, it's kind of a drag. So they lost him, but uh, Johnny Sexton gets to come back, you know, despite his behavior, but uh, he's going to be in. Yeah, I, I check, well, how long is his ban? Uh, it's just for these games. He's in the oh, World so Cup. He's, oh, so he's, he's, back. In, uh, he's okay. back for the pool stage of World Cup. Yeah, Rossi shit. gets a year. Johnny Sexton gets uh, a couple <laughs> warm-up games, and, and Owen Farrell gets nothing, I think. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, well, that, we'll come in more World Rugby, I mean, or as I prefer to call them. I like IRB. That was a better. This World Rugby thing is kind of nonsense, but anyway. Yeah, so obviously a massive rugby fan. That'd be cool. We'll meet up in Paris. Um, Damn straight, man. I've got to exchange numbers, so we got you on WhatsApp yeah, or something I've, I've like got that. yours. I'm, I'm okay. gonna, I'll send you out. Okay, cool beans, cool beans. Yeah, yeah, he says that now. I'll never hear from the guy again. Yeah, no, I'll be, I'll, 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 he's genuine. He'll do that. He'll, he'll, he'll contact me. But um, anyway, so um, so you got some more music coming out. But everyone I talk to says you're a Belleville guy. You're all about Belleville. This is your thing. I mean, Jeez, you man. seem to love this place. Dude, I don't, I don't know. When I grew up here, I was like, I'm getting out of here. As soon as I'm getting out of here. Back to Bob Penn. So, no, so, no. <laughs> so, so I remember like sitting, being stoned and sitting in a park like this, 
you know, um, at nine. For the audience at home, he meant uh, you know people throwing rocks at him. That's being <laughs> stoned. <laughs> it's like and airport like, approach road. Dreaming of escaping this place, and as soon as I could, I moved to Cape Town, which was you know it's not very far, but yeah. I mean it's a if different you, world. If you grew up here, it's like the, this mystical place. Yeah, you know until you get there. <laughs> on the end one. So I kind of moved to Cape Town when I when I when I started working. I was a live sound engineer for a, for a couple of years before Pork of Police got started, um, and then. Lived there for a while, got married, and moved back. <laughs> now I'm back in the heart of Melville, Boston. You can't get more Melville than that. So um, there's a, there's a saying. Um, well, we're Boston coffee, in case you're wondering. There's a saying: um, "See why till I die." Like our number plates, I don't know if you saw this. See why? See why till I die? And it's very funny if you say it in high school, but if you're 40 and it becomes a reality, it's not that funny anymore. <laughs> Well, things don't always turn out the way you expect it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm fucking, I must say, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, um, I'm very happy staying in Melbourne now. It was like when we, we bought the house, yeah, I was like, are we really going to stay here, babe? And um, now I'm here you are. happy, yeah. Well, you know, there's a huge Afrikaans diaspora, um, and those who speak Afrikaans around the world, in the UK, uh, in uh, New Zealand, Australia. It's expensive to, to tour abroad, but have you guys ever toured abroad? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've, we, we've been to New Zealand, we've been to Australia, we've been, uh, we play in the Netherlands quite, all, quite okay. often. I, I'm, I'm saying often. Uh, most we, mostly we, a we, Dutch we, crowd or Afrikaans? N- no. 99% Afrikaans. There's so many young people working yeah, in, yeah. Um, in, in the, the Netherlands. Netherlands yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Afrikaans people. Oh, yeah. South African. Yeah. Um, so we played there. We had a sold out Malpec, which is one of their premium venues now in in uh, July um, and that was our, our greatest show that we've had in 20 years so, wow cool so yeah it's, it's been cool um, ach, we, ach, we've, we've but, played, but, but we've how played. do you go you go, you go as Focke of Police that, was, go, that was Focke of okay. Police yeah I've, I've, I've done it in different okay um, so different, versions, different approaches guess, okay yeah. okay yeah, because I'm thinking what you did this up in Pretoria would be tough because that's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so normally I, I, I have two projects basically that I play most of the time. It's Focke of Polisica. That's like the thing that's been going for 20 years. Yeah. And then I've got a solo project with a, which I play with a band that played most of the songs with me at mm-hmm. the, the show, Die Gefahr. So, so I've been doing that for almost 10 years. It's been yeah. 10 years since that song with Corin Zoy came out. Almost 10 years. Yeah, you ought to do a re-release of it. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. think about I'm it. I'm mean, going to do something special for the 10 years. Yeah, that'd sure. be cool. Well, you're going to do something special for Fuck Off Police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. the 20th anniversary. Yeah, That's cool. Sure. So look for that, folks. That'll be coming up. Listen, I have a feeling that we could talk for hours. Uh, it's 30 minutes have gone by already. Awesome. Just like that. But Chris, thank you. It's been lovely to meet you, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Uh, Francois Von Coke. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you... Yeah. I know you're a rugby man, and, and that gentleman said something before before uh, we started the interview. I don't know if you were aware, but I I, 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 I moved the Springbok boxing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're, you're you're a boxer. Yeah, he said that. Sorry, I forgot all about that. Uh, okay, look at there's there's a, there's journalism failure right there. Uh, yeah, that guy did mention it. Did. Okay, let's talk about your boxing career. No, I, I, I know Derek Al Khan. No, I'm not in a hurry to leave the interview. I just didn't want to tie you up all day. Uh, uh, my flight's at nine thirty. Oh, okay. I got lots of time. Uh, I just like to mention. And I, and I got two hundred fifty six gigs by the day, especially when I'm talking to a rugby guy. You know yeah, what right. I mean? Yeah. Um, no, um, we had like a. In the COVID yeah. time. Now, is this regular boxing? It's not like yeah, it's no, not no, mixed no, martial no, arts. No, regular boxing. Okay. Um, uh, these guys put together this celebrity fight. Okay. And me and Derek Kauhart. Oh, uh, yeah, Derek Kauhart. Well, he's, he's a tough guy. And he was, yeah, I mean, he was 12 kilograms heavier than me, and I, I won the fight. I, 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 it's <laughs> you, one of my proudest, it, my, it, my proudest sporting moments of my life. Was it a tactical life. decision, or, or is it, we didn't no, knock no, no, it out? on points, points. Oh, points, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you knocked him out, he never went back down. But, but, fuck, it was, I was like, before the fight, I trained for three months, I kind of became a boxer, you yeah. know, I was... I was running every day and and boxing during Sit the day. Sit-ups, push-ups. And I was going crazy. I was I was like box obsessed, and I was like I have to move the you know. <laughs> and it was like I was like this is my last shot at sporting glory at 40 you know <laughs> so, so what Francois does is autobiography the day I moored at Springbok yeah. <laughs> I used to tell that story at shows all the time yeah. but then anymore I'm like uh, <laughs> do people know how to hear it yeah. is it trouble <laughs> I, just, I just did it too much well you never hear from Derek Derek, Derek, Derek was very sick now so I, it, well, there was a time yeah yeah should, no, that was horrible yeah. you shouldn't, shouldn't celebrate but he's, up, he's better now he's, he's good oh now. that was pretty he's, scary back in the game now yeah it was pretty scary it nearly took him out no it was very sick Come. Yeah, that was uh, pretty frightening stuff. Uh, and but um, I didn't know his partner was uh, what's her name? Nadine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nadine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I tried to get her a few years ago. Oh, here comes the rain again. Welcome oh, to Western shit. Cape. <laughs> no, 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 this morning I, I went for a run and I've never experienced rain like this in the in uh, it, it was there was, there was like a river in this. Yeah. Down here. Well, there's pebbles and rocks all over the highway coming down here from yeah. wash the wash off. But yeah, no, it's uh, give it a minute. It'll it'll stop and then it'll come back again. <laughs> yeah. So so pugilist. Musician, um, rugby enthusiast, <laughs> rugby scrum half. Uh, what I'm, actually playing, I'm actually playing a little bit of uh, touch rugby tomorrow. Oh, are you? Okay. They've, they've got uh, they've got like a tens competition. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of no, it. No, I know tens because okay. Bram von Straten, um, after the, the Kings folding, uh, went to Bermuda for the Bermuda tens tournament. Okay. And so I was going to go too, but I, I couldn't get I couldn't go because of the COVID. You know, they locked everything down. Um, so getting in was too hard, but I was going to go cover it in Bermuda. I did watch it though; it's pretty wild. Um, some some American rugby players play with South Africans, a lot of people around the world. But the tens is interesting. No, it's crazy. Like I, I actually played like contact rugby yeah. for a couple of years at at thirty six, like after playing rugby when I was like nineteen. Yeah. So the contact was insane. It's hectic going into that shit if you're not used to it. But now they this year they made it touch rugby for. For us, you know, just so we don't get hurt. For the for the uh, for the, um, <laughs> the geri- singer, geriatric. Yeah, they've got like a singer team and an actors team. So, so. <laughs> well, the actors team definitely has flag <laughs> touch <laughs> touch. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm playing a bit of that tomorrow. Yeah, it's so I was uh, I was in Pretoria, and a friend of mine invited me to a lunch, and then it changed because the mayor at Ciliar's Brink was going to uh, speak. And he said, "You want to come?" I'm like, "Yeah." So I went. I got a chance to interview him afterwards, but but um, the lady sat down at the table with us, and we're talking, and I said, "Yeah, no, I'm." I'm um, I'm um, supposed to be. I just got a message from Steve Hofmeyer. We're going to do lunch, and she goes, "Oh, I was Steve's drama teacher." So, no way! No way! Yeah, it's a small world. So yeah. I took a picture of it and I sent it to her, and he's like, "No way!" <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wild. It is a small world. You know, the thing about South Africa and Botswana, I tell people now it's more so Botswana, but certainly even the case in, in South Africa is it's like a small town country. So I mean, if you know somebody, it's like it's like yeah, six degrees of separation. Yeah, definitely connected. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. Crazy. So, yeah. it's actually very very small. Because eh? I mean, like for instance, now now that I, I've met you and I knew you, I'm going to needle you for let me get an interview with Early B and with, oh, with Jack yeah, Easy, easy, easy. Those are close, <laughs> close mates. I can, I can so, make that happen easily. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh, listen, um, it's, it's, it's fantastic to get a chance to chat with you and um, what I suspected is you were just a genuine guy and uh, we've just talked for about 35 minutes and and that's how I leave this conversation. You must be a real, just a genuine dude. If we could talk about rugby and music, I could talk for days. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to do that sometime. That's the only shit I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know something, right? <laughs> Not everybody knows something. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Francois van Kork, uh, bye bye, donkey. It was a real pleasure. Oh, thank you so yeah. much, man. Thank okay. you so much. Cool. Yeah, awesome. You know, All right, folks. Thanks a lot. Be sure to check us out next time. Uh, leave a comment behind. If you got any questions for Francois, send them, and I won't ask them. No, I'll ask them. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot. Cheers, thanks, guys. <laughs>